disgusting dog ownership and I find it very, very irritating. Hello, and here we are again on another landscape photography mission, except again, it was yesterday that I went out and about. At the moment, things just do not seem to be going according to plan. Filming footage, doing landscape photography, creating videos, you're always going to be faced with problems. And at the moment, I am suffering my fair share of them. Sometimes things will go right. Just look at that view at the top of Skidor Mountain in the Lake District. And then sometimes there will be challenges that need to be overcome. The rain is lashing through now. Oh. I started the day by going to a place in West Yorkshire called Hardcastle Crags. Really beautiful place. I wanted to capture some bluebells in some woods. We're all doing bluebells at the moment. I don't want to miss out because it is springtime here in the UK and they are pretty special. So I wanted to do that and then I was going to finish the day with a little bit of infrared photography. So I think what we'll do is we'll run the first part of the video where I go to Hardcastle Crags and then we'll come back and I'll explain some of the issues or one of the big issues as you might tell from the title that I had with the infrared photography. So let's roll the tape and then I'll see you back here shortly. Okay, so I've arrived and we have bluebells. The sun is just starting to come over the hills in the background and when the sunlight hits this wood, I want to be in position to get my shot at that point. It's very early still, about six o'clock in the morning, so there's not many people around. I need to find the right composition. Now, I don't know this area, I've not been here before. So I'm gonna have to have a little explore around, find the right composition with the right amount of bluebells in the shot to really capture that story that I want to tell today. Not gonna be easy though. I think I'm gonna have to do a little bit of walking, a little bit of climbing up and down hills to find the right amount of bluebells, that right nice blue carpet and the right composition. So I'm not gonna waste any time and I'm gonna get going because as that sun comes up, I wanna be in the right spot. So having not been here before, the bluebells are actually telling me where the light's going to be because obviously they need the sunlight, that's where they're gonna grow when they get some sunlight. So I've got this little clearing here behind me, but it just isn't the right composition. I know there's gonna be some sunlight on there because it's starting to come around now, as you can see there, but there just isn't the composition at the moment. So I'm gonna to have to keep exploring to find the right composition. The smell of fresh flowers though is absolutely beautiful. I've decided I'm gonna try and get a detail shot, nice and close to one of the bluebells. What I'm gonna try and do though is get some of that rock in the background there, into the background of my shot. And then as the light is starting to develop onto those trees, it should produce some nice, interesting color into that shot. I'm gonna go for a shallow depth of field. I want to focus in on the, a particular bluebell I found really close to the lens and then blow the background out. So that rock and the trees will be in the bouquet, but you'll still get those beautiful colors and a feel of that composition to really give you a feel, tell the story of this little meadow that I found here. So I'm gonna be hand holding it. I'm at f2.8 to get that maximum shallow depth of field. And then I've got a shutter speed of about 100th, 125 of a second um, because I want to hand hold so I can get down nice and low. ISO's about 100, 200 just to get the exposure right. And I think it's gonna be a really nice shot that's gonna to add to the story of my day, but I need to get down low here and I'm just waiting for the sun to develop through the trees here. It has been hitting certain bits of these bluebells as it's been coming through, but I just need to be a little bit patient, wait for the sun to hit the right flower and then capture that shot. It's very rare that a clone things into my images in Photoshop. I do often clone stuff out, but today I've decided to clone something in. Look at this. Without the clone, with the clone. It's a better image, isn't it? Okay, 
so I'll say that okay so I'm at the destination of the walk today this behind me is Gibson's Mill this is a well photographed scene because it's a busy area it's a national trust place and it's just a beautiful composition like I've said before there's nothing wrong with shooting those images at the moment I've got a few things working in my favor I've got the fact that there's some really interesting clouds up there in the sky at the moment nice long thin clouds that are going to increase the interest in the sky it's not the perfect time of day but I also have this pond which is just beautifully still and it's it's looking like glass so I'm going to get really nice reflections of the mill Gibson's mill in that water I'm f8 because I've got not a lot of things really close to the lens so I don't need a big depth of field I've got varying shutter speeds because I'm bracketing as well because there's a massive dynamic range as the sun is coming up above the hills and I'm going to stick around just to see how the light develops if it hits the mill at all and that could really increase the interest of this image I did want to get some bluebells in the shot there are a few along the bank here but I just don't think that's going to work out but as it is it should be a fairly decent image like I say nothing unique but decent well I've found another bench I don't know about you but when I'm doing my landscape photography when I go to an area I'm pretty much operating on emotion and what I mean by that is when I go to an area I want to feel what the area is all about uh, I want to be able to tell the story of the area with my photographs and it's really I'm just a lot of the time I'm just working on feeling how I feel about the place how my vision sort of reacts to the place as well and sometimes that just doesn't happen because I'm basically not feeling it and that is kind of happening here today at Hardcastle Crags I'm happy with the couple of shots that I've got but it's just not the sort of place where I want to stay forever and shoot landscape photography don't get me wrong it's it is a beautiful place I'd love to come here with the family have a nice walk here that type of thing but photography wise I'm just not feeling inspired and that right or wrong that is how I operate um, it's also a slight issue with doing uh, photography in the morning because once that golden light has gone and you're into a beautiful sunny day like today your opportunities to get really great images are a little bit limited but there is an answer to that that lets you keep shooting throughout the day and that is infrared photography I don't know if you've ever seen it before I've done a fair bit of it in my time I've got a few tutorials up as well if you want to look at them but that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the day I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go to another location to try and shoot some infrared photography so I'm going to pop to another location now and do that And that is as far as it got. Can you see the dog here? It is chasing the swans. Bit of an unruly dog. It then ran up to my bag and because I was too busy worrying that the dog was going to knock my camera into the canal, I was protecting that. And the dog just started to take a wee on my bag. You cheeky little thing. So I gave the bag a kick and it sent the dog, knocked the dog away a little bit. It didn't send the dog flying, don't worry, I didn't hurt the dog. The dog ran off and I could have forgiven that because that's what dogs do. They wee on things, don't they? And my bag was lying on the floor so I could forgive that. What I can't forgive and what I cannot abide was the owners, two of them, they were running and they just continued to run past merrily on their way. Now, unacceptable. If your dog's done that, just own it. Apologise for what it's done. Offer to clean it. Offer to clean the wee off my bag. But no, did they do that? Of course they didn't. They just ran on and I said, I shouted after them, but they just ignored me. I was, I made sure they didn't have headphones on or anything like that. And they just kept on running. Totally ignored me. Totally inappropriate. I spent a lot of time out and about. You come across dog owners 
the vast majority of them very careful, reasonable, considerate, then you get those few that spoil it for the many. Thankfully though, thankfully, the F-Stop Suka bag, waterproof bag, very, very good, survived it. I did have to stop my filming, go away and clean the bag because I didn't want it soaking in, starting to smell, getting through the bag or anything like that. So I had to shut the shoot down and go and clean my bag. Very frustrating, but there we go. Anyway, I do intend to make some infrared landscape photography vlogs. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of infrared photography and whether you want to see me shooting those types of vlogs. I'd also love it if you would subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you on another one very soon, hopefully with a bit more luck and a bit more success on my side. Anyway, I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out. Just look at that view at the top of Skidar Mountain in the Lake District.